Hello everyone, I hope you had a great week. Today, we're diving into the exciting world of making our character climb walls, including specific walls and how to make the character drop from them. This video builds on the character controller script we discussed in the previous video, so if you missed that, feel free to check it out in the description below. As always, the character model animations can be found in the description as well. Let's jump right into it. Character setup. We begin by enhancing our character setup. We add two Raycast 3D nodes to our visual node and name them Wall Check and Still Wall. The Wall Check node is positioned at the character's knee, while the Still Wall node is placed just above the character's head. This setup allows us to determine if both Raycasts are colliding, indicating that the player is on a wall. If only the wall check is colliding, it means the player has run out of walls to climb and should be pushed over. Character Script In the character script, we start by creating variables for the Raycast nodes and a new variable to check if the character is in the climb state, initially set to false. We introduce a new function named climbing. Within this function, we first check if wall check is colliding. If it is, we proceed to check if still wall is also colliding. If both are colliding, we set climb to true, indicating that the character is in the climbing state. If still wall is not colliding, it means the character has run out of walls to climb. So we push the character up and set climb to false. If wall check is not colliding, we simply set climb to false. We call the climbing function under the physics process function to continuously check the climbing state. Next, when the player is climbing a wall, we don't want gravity to affect them. Therefore, where we apply gravity to the character, we add a condition, if not climb. This ensures that gravity only applies when the character is not in the climbing state. Furthermore, since character movement accounts for the X, Y and Z axes, but when climbing, we only need to consider the X and Y axes, we add a condition to the character movement section, if not in climb. To ensure that the character doesn't accumulate unnecessary velocity or movement direction while climbing, we set a condition stating that if the character is climbing, the velocity and movement direction should be zero. This prevents the character from building up speed and direction. We then calculate the rotation of the character with respect to the wall. We also capture user input for both the X and Y axes. We assign the user input on the X axis to the X axis, the user input on the Y axis to the Y axis, and set the Z axis to zero for the move direction vector. We apply the rotation with respect to the wall and subsequently, we assign the X, Y and Z axes of the velocity to the X, Y and Z axes of the move direction. In the section where we rotated the character with respect to the camera's direction, we add a not climb. This ensures that the character rotates with respect to the camera's view only when not in the climbing state. However, when in the climb state, the character is rotated with respect to the wall. Finally, in the process function, where we check if the character is on a thin surface. We add the condition, if not in the climb state. This prevents the character from transitioning to the crouch state while climbing a wall. Climbing controls and animation. To ensure that the character only climbs walls when the player wants to, we add a button that checks if the player pressed the climb button while the wall check is colliding. Additionally, we make it possible to exit the climb state by setting climb to false when that button is pressed once, indicated as just pressed. Before we proceed, there's a bug we need to address. When a player presses both the left and right keys at the same time, the velocity becomes zero, which means the player doesn't move. Nevertheless, the move animation still plays. The same issue occurs when the player presses both the up and down keys simultaneously. To fix this, we can add a condition that checks if the velocity is greater than zero before playing the move animation. Otherwise, the respective idle animation is played. Animation handling. Now, let's focus on adding animations for the climbing state. 
The first change we make is to replace the condition that checks if the player has inputted the up, down, left or right buttons to trigger animations. Instead, we check if the player has moved. In the else condition, we add not climb to the condition that plays the idle animation and create an idle condition for the climb state. So, we transition from having this line of code for animation handling to this. Under the section where we rotate the character to face the camera, we set move to true. Additionally, under the section where we check if move is true before playing the move animation, we create a condition for handling climb animations and set the animation blend to 0.5. We reset the animation blend to 0.3 when the character is not climbing. To prevent the character from looking like they're sliding, we introduce a new variable for climb speed and assign a value to it. Under the part where we handle velocity when the character is climbing, we multiply the move direction with the climb speed. Sliding down walls. Another feature we want to add is to make the character slide down when the player presses both the down and sprint keys simultaneously. To achieve this, we create a variable called slide down and set it to false. We write a condition under the sprint condition that checks if the player has pressed both the down and sprint keys and is also in the climb state. In this case, we set climb speed to 5 and slide down to true. Otherwise, climb speed remains at 0.8 and slide down is false. We add a condition under the part where we handle animations during the climb state, if not the player is sliding down. This ensures that the player transitions to the idle state when sliding down. And there you have it, a third person controller that can climb walls. We're not finished yet. There's still much more to improve, including making the character climb specific objects, jump off walls and run on walls, among other features. We have a lot of polishing to do and I'll make sure to create tutorials on these topics. Please like and subscribe to be notified when I release the next lesson. As always, you can provide feedback, corrections or suggest better alternatives in the comments. I'd greatly appreciate your feedback. See you next week.